Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can map a nested hierarchy of a JSON object into a flat structure in Swift language. Now the structure that we are talking about is on the open weather map and you can actually take a look at this. So you can see this is a nested hierarchy. We have the actual object that begins as a dictionary or a plain old object. And then we have a lot of other stuff going on. We have the coordinates key, we have the weather, we have base, we have main, we have visibility and so on. Now obviously it's gonna take forever to map all of these things. So we are going to select a couple of interesting things. The first thing I'm gonna select is the main one, this part, the main. All right, actually let me reuse that. So we're talking about this main and we are talking about this array of weather. So what we want to do is we want to map the main as well as the weather into some sort of a structure that we will have, but that will be more of a flat structure. Unfortunately, obviously we cannot really do a complete flat structure because weather is an array. So we will have to create an array for our structure. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing what we will do is we want to create some sort of a weather response, meaning an object that will represent this whole thing, starting with this part and ending all the way down. All right, so we need that kind of an object. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a structure and I will say weather response. And since we're only decoding, I'm just gonna say that this is going to be a decodable. All right, now this will be our final flat object that we will eventually have. So let's go ahead and map all of these properties. I'm simply going to take the temperature, pressure, and humidity, all the other properties you can map on your own, but let's go ahead and take these three properties. So there we go. We have all of these three properties. The, so the first task we're trying to do is to actually map this, the whatever is inside the main part, we are only concerned about this. All right, sorry about that. Somebody is at the door. All right. So now what we're doing, trying to do is we have this main and a, we want to map the temperature, we want to map the pressure, we want to map the humidity into our own object, which is temperature, humidity, and pressure. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to get started by creating some private keys or a coding key. So enum, and I'm gonna go ahead and say main keys. So main keys, which will be of type string and coding key. And inside the main keys over here, I can declare all the different keys that are inside over here in the main function or in the main dictionary, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. Now, since the name of our properties is different from what we are getting, actually one of them is different. You can actually see this is temp temperature. So we don't really need this part and this part. Only the temperature key in JSON is different. As you can see over here, it's called temperature on T and P and not temperature. So that's why we have to kind of like map it in our coding keys to tell it that it's gonna be mapped to the temperature, which is coming from JSON and put the value into temperature, which is the actual key that we have, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to go ahead and now implement the init decoder we are going to get access to the decoder and it can actually throw us an exception. Okay, so inside the decoder, the first thing what we want to do is to actually decode the main thing, like this whole object, which is starting from right over here. All right, unfortunately, you will see that this particular object doesn't really have any keys. I mean, we have the keys for the main part, which is this part right here, but we don't have keys like coordinates, weather, and main, which should be part of the weather response, the top level object. So let's go ahead and create those keys. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a key over here, private 
enum and I'm going to say weather response keys which will be of type string all right and coding key and then I'm going to map the keys. So right now I'm only mapping one key. I'm only interested in main and that is one of the keys. If you look over here, this is the main key that we are mapping to. All right. Okay, let's go back. And now we can actually go ahead and decode it. So I'm going to go ahead and say if weather response container, so we will get the container hopefully, and then we are going to decode it. So decoder.container and the key that we are decoding, the keys will be represented by the weather response keys dot self. So we're trying to decode this main thing, this whole object, big one. And now we can actually say that if the child container, if let main container equals to, if the weather response container dot nested container, if it is keyed by main keys dot self, and for the key that we're looking for is main, then go ahead and give us the main container, which in other words means that we will get hopefully access to this particular container. Now, once we have access to the main container, we can map all of those properties like temperature, humidity, and pressure. So let's go ahead and map all of those properties. That wouldn't be any problem because it's simply reading the main container and decoding the properties and decoding all the properties that are part of the main keys, which in this case is temperature, humidity, and pressure, as you can see over here. All right. Now, let's go ahead and see that if we can actually run this. Right now, we don't have any code for, uh, you can see that we don't really have any code for uh, making a request. So let's go ahead and make a request. I'm going to go over here at the end and we're just going to try to make a request. And let's go ahead and press the play button. Okay, so we already have some issue. Uh, unresolved identifier URL, which is kind of weird because the URL is actually declared. So let's go ahead and run it again. And there we go. So you can see where the response comes up. The temperature is populated, your humidity is populated, and pressure is populated. And these are all the values that we're getting from the main container, which is great. The next part would be to actually get the weather. But the problem is the weather is actually an array. Right over here, you can see the weather is an array of objects. We only have one object in there, but it can have multiple objects. So we have to accommodate that this is an array. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to create some sort of a weather class that can or a structure where we can populate all of that information. So I'm going to create a weather structure which will have main, description, and icon. The other thing we need to do is we need to update the weather, uh, the weather response keys. Right now it only has main which is going to map to this one. Now we can add the key for weather and we can call it anything we want, but it would be a good idea to call it just weather because it's going to map it. The other thing that we need to do is we need to add a property for weather and weather and we are going to go ahead and initialize the weather. All right. Okay. Now, finally, we can go ahead and map those. So it's not really part of the main container, so that's not going to happen. What we can do is we can simply tell that it will be part of the weather response container, and we can simply map it in one single line. Great, right? So what we're saying over here is the weather response container or decode. So we are at this level right over here. And we are going to decode this one, the weather, into the weather structure because we are saying over here weather structure. And the key that we are decoding is the weather key, which is identified by weather, which is right over here. So everything, in other words, everything that will be inside over here will be decoded to a particular structure, which will be the weather because we have identified right over here. All right. 
Okay, now let's go ahead and run it again. And hopefully we'll also get the weather information in this case. And there we go. So we get the weather response. We have the temperature, humidity, pressure, and then we have weather, which is an array. You can see it's an array. And the array contains weather objects, which are right over here. You can see that weather object. And then this has main, and this has some sort of a description and some sort of a icon. So we were able to get everything and map it to a kind of a flat object. It's not completely flat because we do have to accommodate the weather and that's an array, but you can see it's more of a little bit more flat object than what we started with, all right? So this is how you can map a very nested hierarchy in JSON in Swift and Swift 4, Swift 5 to a flat model. If you want to support my work and support my channel, then check out my course, The Complete Guide to JSON Parsing Using Surfire. Now, JSON Parsing is just such a common operation in iOS application or any kind of application that you're building, you will have to parse, you will have to consume some sort of an API, whether it is a Maps API, whether it is a Weather API, whether it is some other API that you have built. And that is such a common operation that you have to learn how to parse JSON in order to become a successful iOS Swift developer. And I have a course for you. This is called the Complete Guide to JSON Parsing. And it's going to cover many, many different scenarios uh, that you will face when parsing JSON. So check this course out. The best way to get this course is to check out the link in the YouTube description. And there will be some other links for other courses also. So if you are interested in Swift UI or augmented reality and so on, you can check out the links also. But please do use the link because that will really benefit me when you're purchasing the course. Thank you so much. And if you do have any questions, let me know.